and welcome to the first episode of Budget Builds. Now, as I mentioned in my channel update a couple of weeks ago, this first series within a series, if you like, is going to focus on kilting. And just to, to give you a recap of um, what I said in that update, um, the idea behind this series is to take a game and do all of the painting and scratch building of everything you will need to play that game, spending as little money as possible. So future videos in this series are going to be about making terrain and a battle board and all that kind of stuff. But today's first episode, I'm going to be showing you the painting uh, techniques that I used. Now, I just want to get it out there to begin with that this is not a detailed painting tutorial for orcs. This is very much just a, a guide on how to paint a team of orcs using as few paints as possible. So if you're looking for um, a really detailed tutorial on how to paint orcs to a really high standard, then this isn't the video for you. Um, but if you are very new to the hobby and you don't really have much of a paint collection yet and you want to try Kill Team, spending as little money as possible, then give this a watch. Um, my painting isn't the best. Um, I'm quite a neat painter, uh, but I'm not a particularly detailed painter. And because I've purposefully done this with a limited palette, these models are, are quite low on detail, really. But they're quick and they look really cool as a team on the table. So. Um, as you'll see at the start of the video, I have painted my entire team of orcs using only eight paints and some homemade wash that I will explain about in the video. Um, but I've used Citadel paints, but you don't have to. Um, again, this is just a guide. So where I've used uh, Warboss Green, if you've got Vallejo paints, for example, you can just use any green that you think looks all right for that colour. It's all interchangeable. So... With all that said, let's head to the table and I will see you in a bit. So here are our eight colours. We've got two metallics, a bone, a red, a green and a brown. And then this purple colour, and that's my chosen kind of identifier for my team. Their shirts and things like that are going to be purple. So we're going to start off with Warboss Green and this is for his flesh. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to show you the end result. So this is what we're going for. As you can see, it's not particularly vibrant. It's not particularly detailed, but I think it looks pretty cool. So I primed this guy in black and then I sprayed on a little bit of grey and then a little bit of white just from above and that just kind of helps with um, bringing through the highlights of the model once you start painting and i'm going to be using my new favorite brush which is a number two from rosemary and co i'm using a wet palette for this uh, mainly because it's it's going to be a batch job and um, i don't really want the paints to dry out i want to be able to go back to it and paint the other models as well and I'm going to be doing a little bit of mixing so a wet palette is definitely a better idea for this and as you can see I've thinned my paint down quite a lot and this is actually a layer paint rather than a base paint so it's already quite transparent um, but that's absolutely fine because I prefer to do um, two relatively thin coats for my base layer anyway so I'm just going to start picking out all the little bits of flesh and covering them in Warboss Green. Now, as you can see, I, I'm a relatively neat painter, even when I'm doing a base layer, but it really doesn't matter if you're a little bit messy um, with this, simply because you can, you can touch it up. There's going to be loads of opportunities to touch up any mistakes you make 
while you're doing this painting. So I've done his face, his hands, his arms, um, and as you can see, I've done a second coat and it's, you know, that colour's really popping now. I've just made sure to get under his armpit there. Um, but there are some tricky bits on this one. And as you can see, there's a bit of flesh under here. But my philosophy is, if you're not going to see it without turning the model upside down, you don't need to waste your time and effort painting it. So the next thing we're going to paint is his trousers and the straps that are holding his gun on his back. And for that, we're going to be using Mornfang Brown. And again, I've just thinned it down as much as I can so that I get a nice smooth layer of paint. Um, and again, I'm going to be doing two layers anyway, so... I'm just making sure I don't paint over that little bit on his knee because that's going to be metallic. So I'm just leaving that to go over in the next stage. As you can see, I kind of just caught his boot there while I was painting. But again, I'm going to be going over it with uh, another colour. So it doesn't really matter about making those kind of mistakes. So his trousers are now painted with two layers of Monfang Brown. And I've also done the little straps on his back there. A few little tricky, hard to reach places there that I've just kind of roughly filled in. Because as I said, no one's really going to see them. So now we're going to move on to the metallics. So to begin with, I'm going to be just doing... Uh, a rough layer of lead belcher over anything that's metal. Now, I have to confess, I'm not a huge fan of Citadel metallics. Um, I just find them really difficult to thin, um, and I can never quite get the coverage that I want. <clears throat> um, and just a quick note as well, don't use the metallics on your wet palette, because you can damage the, the sponge on your wet palette if you do. So this is just on a, a normal dry paper palette. <clears throat> If anyone's got any recommendations for good metallic paints, let me know in the comments because I'm always looking to uh, to try and get something that works a little bit better. So as you can see, I'm painting the his combi weapon. I'm painting the the bullets down the front there, um, and then I'm just going to add a little bit to the metallic part on the front of his boots. And then, of course, we're going to paint the um, the armour on his shoulders and all the details on the back, including the metallic part of the gun and the chain and the pole. <laughs> and not forgetting the little patch on his knee as well. So all the silver is done now. So the next step, I am going to take my chosen colour, which is purple, um, and I'm going to paint that on his shirt and his little kind of skirt thing. So this is the purple that I'm using. I'm showing this one because I have no idea how to pronounce it. So again, really thin down. The, uh, some of this is pretty tricky, so you haven't got much space to work with for the, um, the purple here. So I'm just being as careful as I can, but as I've said, if you make any mistakes, you can, uh, you can touch them up at a later time. So this is where it does get tricky, it's just painting around the, uh, the rim of his shoulder there. Um, I didn't do that on camera because I haven't yet found a comfortable way of setting up a camera so that I can paint 
and show you, but also properly see what I'm doing. So <laughs> I've uh, I've kind of cheated on this video and I haven't filmed myself doing any of the, uh, the tricky bits. <laughs> So just making sure that you uh, you do both sides with the uh, the purple. So there you go. You can see there where I've put the uh, the purple just to to highlight his team color. And then we're going to use some Corvus Black just to paint the boots. Now I prefer to use Corvus Black for things like this, um, but it, if you don't have that and you already have some normal black, feel free to use that. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't make uh, too much of a difference. Uh, I'm also going to use this Corvus Black on the strap on his arm there as well. So next I'm going to be using Mephiston Red just to paint the uh, the little guy on his uh, on his back there. He's a little bit tricky to paint just because he's uh, he's so small. Um, if you need to, obviously, you can go down to a smaller brush. So he is done. <laughs> and next, I'm going to be painting some of the details on the back. And for that, I wanted a slightly lighter brown. So I have mixed the Monfang Brown 50-50 with the Ushabti Bone. And it's it's just to make, um, make a bit of a difference, really, so that it's not all the same brown colour. Obviously, if you, you know, if you do have more paints and you, you have a larger palette you can work with, you can obviously just use a different coloured brown paint if you want. But that's the other reason I recommend using a wet palette so that you can keep the consistency of the paint that you've mixed. So next we're going to be using just a shabty bone on its own and we're going to be painting all of the, surprisingly, all of the bone parts of the model. So I'm just painting the, the little skull on, uh, on the top of his head there. And I'm going to use this as well to paint his fingernails. And again, I am just doing a little demo to show you, but this is really hard to paint whilst holding this at arm's length so that it's uh, in view of the camera. And then I'm going to paint the uh, the little horns that the uh, the little guy is is sat on. And I also painted his teeth and uh, just made sure that I uh, painted all of his fingernails and the teeth of the little guy up there as well. So next we're going to be doing his hair. Now for that I mixed the uh, purple with red and a shabty bone in equal quantities just to get a kind of nice pink colour. So I'm going to paint his hair and the hair on his little friend. Next, we're going to pick out some details on the metallics. And for this, I am using Balthazar Gold, which is kind of a bronzy colour. And I'm literally just picking out a couple of bits just to just to make them stand out a little bit, really. So I'm, you know, I'm painting the end of his combi weapon and then I'm painting the tips and the bases of the, the bullets as well, just because I think it makes quite a nice feature on the front of the model and uh, just makes them just makes them stand out a little bit more really but again you can pick out any little details that you want and then for this bit i'm just going back to my mornfang brown 
and just painting these little leather straps across the back. And you can see here what I was saying about the browns is if I'd used the same brown for the holster, this would have all kind of blurred into, uh, into one. So just by lightening that brown for the holster, it just adds that little bit of uh, contrast between the colours and it doesn't just look like a big, big blob on the back. So that's it. That is all the base painting done. Now he, he I think he looks pretty cool. He's uh, he's got all of his necessary colours. But what we're going to do now is add a couple of really simple steps just to really make all the colours pop and to add some highlights and some darker areas in the recesses. So to start with, you're going to need a really big dry brush. And I'm just using a Shabti bone here. Um, and I've wiped it off with my paper towel, checked it on my thumb. And I'm literally... I'm just going to attack the entire model because I'm using this bone colour because it's kind of a neutral colour. Normally when you're dry brushing you would take a, a lighter version of the colour, of the base colour uh, to dry brush over. Now to make this quick and so that you're using as few paints as possible, I've just gone for a very neutral creamy colour that will add general highlights to all of the base colours. Now there are a few areas that I've realised on this where I went a little bit too heavy with the dry brush in, but you know what, I can live with that. That, you know, as I always say, is not a competition. Um, he still looks cool in the end. So I'm just making sure that I go over the entire model so that we're highlighting all of the the features of uh, the holster, his shoes, the features on his face, just making sure that all those little raised parts and all the details are, uh, are really highlighted. Um, and I think you've seen me there a couple of times where, where I did realise at the time that I'd gone a little bit too heavy. I just rubbed it off with my finger and you can do that um, as you're dry brushing if you need to. So once you have got the level of dry brushing that you want on this, it's time to kind of tone it back down again. And for that, we're going to use this homemade wash. Now, this is an idea from Geek Gaming, uh, Luke over at Luke's APS. And it is literally Pledge Floor Polish and Brown Artist's Ink. And you mix it to until you get the colour that you want. Um, you can test it on the side of the pot there. Um, and you can see that this is essentially like Agrax Earthshade. Uh, and what this does is it just helps to blend all those colours together. It helps to blend the, the dry brushing you've done uh, in with the base colours. It just smooths everything out and, um, and just makes everything pop. Um, it sinks into the recesses to darken those, which contrasts against the highlights that you've just done with the dry brushing. Now, I will warn you, if you use this recipe, because this really caught me off guard, it will lather <laughs> when you're applying it. I wondered if I'd brought the wrong stuff or something. It, I was just, I was quite shocked as I started applying it and there were just bubbles and froth. Um, but it does dry absolutely fine. Um, so if you start seeing froth coming up and stuff when you're, uh, when you're adding this wash, don't worry about it. It doesn't dry streaky. It, it, it's absolutely fine once it's dry. And then all you need to do is leave that to dry. And these are the results. Now, I couldn't get the best photos in the world because I couldn't find the, uh, the right light. Um, but you get the idea from these. And as you can see, something else that I did afterwards, after I touched up, was to paint the eyes. Um, I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to do that on camera, but all I did was paint them with Mephiston Red, using a small detail brush, and then I added a tiny, tiny dot of Oshabti Bone just to finish them off where the light would be catching them. 
So there you go. That's how I painted a whole team of orcs using only eight paints. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And that way you'll be notified whenever I release more content. Now, the links to my Facebook and Instagram are down in the descriptions. And if you've got any feedback for me, just leave it down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So I will be back next Saturday with the next video in this series, which is back on much more familiar ground for me because I'm going to be doing the bases for all of these miniatures. So I hope you can join me for that. And until then, happy hobbying.